Hey, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement your own custom PKI or public key infrastructure. So I've never ran through this lab in class yet, uh, although I've been told that this is a pretty challenging lab just because of uh, the number of steps involved and the complex commands you need to run with all the various options. Uh, it's really easy to get off track, so I'm hoping by making this video, uh, it serves as you know another additional resource that you can kind of use to help uh, get through this. Now, that being said, so I'm making this video in spring 2023. If you're watching this and you're taking this class with someone else or on a different term, uh, they may have tweaked these instructions. They may not be 100% kind of in line with what I'm showing you today. So treat this video as kind of an extra additional resource, not an end-all, be-all guide. So I'm using Kali Linux. I have Canvas pulled up within Kali. Uh, I'm using uh, this within NetLab. So this will allow me to kind of copy things from Canvas into my terminal without having to like worry about setting up auto hotkey or, or anything like that. Um, it saves me a little bit of time. I do want to note as I go through these instructions, there are some nice uh, videos that are included in here. Uh, but for whatever reason, Canvas doesn't like to render them correctly all the time. So as you can see, um, this is just loading a black box for me. Perhaps for you, it'll just be white. Uh, if you notice the video doesn't work, like even here within Kali, it doesn't play. Uh, I also have a link to the video as well you can click on. Uh, again, within Kali, the video doesn't really quite quite seem to work correctly. So I am also going to kind of load up these videos in Chrome. I have you know Chrome open and I have the video open on my host machine so I can watch them as we kind of go through. So um, feel free to use the, the ASCII videos uh, in addition to this YouTube video as well. So let's talk about what PKI is. So public key infrastructure relies on digital certificates. So that means that it's going to have a very a varying set of keys, public and private, that's going to be used for encryption. This is known as asymmetric encryption. Uh, it's a very common type of technology. It's going to be used uh, in conjunction with OpenSSL. Uh, this is, again, a very popular tool uh, that's used by, by most organizations around the world, I'll say. And this tool is included in a lot of uh, operating systems and Linux distributions. Uh, and it's already kind of built into, into Kali Linux. So for our demo today, it should be pretty straightforward. Now, the first thing we want to do is prep our environment. So I'm going to create some directories. Uh, this guide in Canvas kind of walks you through some of the steps. The video, uh, the ASCII video that you can't see right now, walks you through some other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you um, what I'd recommend that you do. So I'm opening up a, a terminal in Kali, just like that. And I'll make this text just a little bit larger so it's easier to see in your video screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory called SSL. And I'm making that within my home directory. And then, then I'm going to make um, a, second, a second directory uh, called demo CA. CA stands for Certificate Authority. And then I'm just going to check where I currently am. And I'm just in my home directory. And then I'll move into the, the demo CA directory. And as you can see, I'm in there now. So now I'm going to uh, create some files we're going to need. So I'm going to make just two additional directories. And you saw that I made the SSL and then the demo CA, CA uh, directory kind of Individually, you can also use mkdir or make dir to just do that all in one go. So just to give you another example, we'll make a directory called new certs and private. And we could do additional directories as well. So you can use mkdir to do more than one directory at a time. And there are the two directories. And then I'm also going to make an empty file using touch. And then I'm going to run echo. 1000 serial. And as you can see, that just literally put the value 1000 into a file named serial. And I'll be using these in a second. Uh, and then as we go through a canvas, there is some explanation about what these do. So the demo CA directory is going to be the main directory for our content. Um, the new search is going to be a directory to store the certificates that we generate. Uh, private's going to store the private keys. Index.txt is going to be a database file. Uh, we'll see how this is populated in a little bit. And serial is going to be um, a different file then that we just arbitrarily started with the number of 
1000. And while we didn't create it, we also be using the following pre-existing files, uh, etc ssl openssl.cnf. Uh, this is kind of the master configuration file. And again, um, this is going to be uh, available on any Linux distribution or most Linux distributions, I'll say. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our root CA key and file. Um, sorry, CA key and certificate. Um, again, these videos aren't going to work inside of Kali Linux, at least if you're like me. So then feel free to load this up uh, in a, a separate browser window and you can play it off to the side and follow along or just watch my video. It's up to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to run open SSL gen RSA dash AES 256 dash out private slash CA key dot Pem 4096. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a private key for us. OpenSSL is the tool that we're going to be using. Gen RSA is going to generate the private key using RSA, which is the most popular among asymmetric algorithms. And AES 256. AES is the most popular symmetric algorithm which might seem odd here, but we're actually using AES with the password as a key to encrypt our private key. So that way someone can't view it without the password. The dash out is the location of where we want to output the, the actual private key. So we're, where we want to save it. In this case, we're going to go into the demo CA slash private slash CA key dot pem file. And then 4096, that's the size or, no, or the strength of the private key uh, in bits. So assuming I have no typos in here, I'll be able to hit enter. And we'll be able to enter in a passphrase for our key. So I'm making a passphrase for my key. Uh, and now, if all is well, it's going to be in the private directory right there. So now we're going to create our certificate. And this is going to include the public key from the corresponding private key that we had just made. So the command for that is going to be OpenSSL, REQ, X509. My cursor go, sorry, I lost track of my mouse. Dash X509, dash new, dash key into private, CA key.pem days 7305 SHA256 extensions V3CA underscore CA out CA cert dot pen so let's talk about what this command is going to do. So once again, OpenSSL is the tool we're using. REQ, rec, that stands for the command to create the certificate standing request, uh, dash X509. This is our flag to immediately sign the certificate from the CSR in a single step. We'll see how this uh, differs shortly. Dash new, we're creating a new certificate, dash key. Since we're creating a certificate, which includes a public key, we also need to specify the matching private key. Dash SHA-256, that's a hashing, hashing algorithm that we'll use to sign the certificate. Uh, and interestingly, we've now seen asymmetric uh, it, to create the public key for confidentiality, symmetric to encrypt the public key for confidentiality, and now hashing to digitally sign the certificate for integrity. Dash days. And this is how long we want to certify our certificate in days. Now, obviously, if we've picked 20 years, counting for the leap years, because our root CA is really rarely used and has very limited risk exposure, uh, we can keep it around for a very long time. Then we have dash extensions. Uh, this is going to specify the, a group or settings from our configuration file for typical certif certificate authority, dash out. Uh, this is the location where we want to output. So uh, as an example, we're going to be saving into the demo CA slash CA cert.pem uh, file. 
Once we do that, uh, we get an error message. So let me see what we had mistyped. And it should be days, not day. And if you make a typo as another tip, you can hit the up key on your keyboard and move back up to that previous command and just fix your uh, typo. Type in our password for the key. And we're going to start filling out some information. So you don't have to fill out exactly the same. Uh, although if you don't really know what you're doing, I'd probably recommend following along and filling out exactly the same. So US is the country, state or province, that'll be uh, Wisconsin, locality, Pewaukee, organization name, um, you could do WCTC uh, or spell it out, I'll do county, organizational name, I'm gonna leave this uh, blank for now, Common name, an email address, leave that blank. All right, so now our certificate had been created. So we can view our certificate, which contains the public key by just going in. And we save our certificate there. Ta-da, and here's our certificate. So what is a PEM file, P-E-M? So it stands for Privacy Enhanced Mail. It was a failed method for secure email, but the container lives on. And this is gonna have a base 64 encoded version of our certificate. And next we're gonna take a look at the top 10 lines uh, using head. And there it goes, it prints the first 10 lines. Uh, we can also look at the certificate in more of a friendly format and also check to make sure that uh, it's in a valid, uh, a valid format. So I'm gonna type out this long command. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit unwieldy. It's gonna be multiple pages. You can type space to go to the next page or just the Q button on your keyboard uh, to completely quit. So let's go ahead and do it. Open SSL x509 dash I N C A cert dot pem no out dash text pipe less. So we can see our certificate information, Wisconsin, Pewaukee, uh, Waukesha County Technical College, and you can type sp space to go to the next page, or just the Q key on your keyboard to quit. And we can also run another similar command again to highlight the, the public key if you wanted to view the public key in the certificate. So to do that, I'm going to run it similarly, but I'm going to use, a, use a, something known as grep. And if you don't know grep, uh, you will know it after taking either Linux Essentials or Bash Shell scripting. And with all the special characters, I'm not even going to say out loud what I'm typing. Otherwise, it's just going to trip me up. But you can follow along on my screen. So open SSL x509 dash in ca cert dot pem dash no out dash text pipe grep dash dash color always equal always dash capital E lowercase i and then in quotes period star public period star pipe uh, dollar sign and this is essentially going to filter out our public key and then pipe less rx and ta-da here it highlights the public key strength 4096 um, which is kind of a fun ex ex exercise or activity. Um, you're done, you hit Q, and there you go. So now that we have our root, cer our root certificate authority created, uh, we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be creating our intermedi intermediate uh, certificate authority, or CA. This is the next step in the chain. So just like with the root CA, uh, we're going to start by creating a private key. I'm going to move up one directory. And then I'm just going to double check our current directory path. So home Cali SSL, right? That looks great. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to generate our next private key. So I'm going to type out open SSL gen RSA 
dash AES two five six dash out. I'm going to call this intermediate underscore C A key dot pem forty ninety six. Go ahead and sign a password. And now it has been created right there. And again, just like before gen RSA, this generates a private key using RSA, which is the most popular asymmetric algorithm. The dash AES 256, again, we're gonna recognize this as the most popular symmetric algorithm. Um, again, this might seem odd that we're actually using AES with a password uh, to encrypt our private key. Uh, and that's so someone can't view it without the password. Dash out, this is the location of where we want the output of the key to go. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to put it in the same directory with the file name intermediate underscore ca key dot pem. And then finally, the strength 4096. This is going to be the strength of our key in bits. So now that we have our intermediate ca key, I'm going to generate our CSR. And just as an FYI, be very careful how you name your keys and your certificate signing requests and your certs. Um, I accidentally just overwrote uh, one, a very important file, so I've been spending the past 15 minutes or so kind of fixing my mistake. Uh, so yeah, just as an FYI, be careful. Um, I paused the video and I made a mistake, so I'm fixing it and kind of redoing that part. So now for the CSR, so open SSL, rec new SHA-256, key intermediate CA key.pem out intermediate csr dot pem just like before us wisconsin kiwaki waki sha county technical college unit name blank common name Ta-da, just like that. And now we are going to sign our intermediate CSR and generate our certificate. All right, moment of truth. Boo, I got an error message. Dang it, I always do this. Uh, I always type day instead of days for whatever reason. Someday my muscle memory will uh, catch up. Enter pass. Sign the certificate. This looks good. Type in Y for yes. Type in Y to commit. Woo, look at that, we just signed our first certificate. And it's sitting right there in this directory. So now we're to the point where we can generate a certificate for our web server. So we'll get to go through this another time. So first we're gonna generate our private key, open SSL, gen RSA, AES256 out and generally the naming scheme for web server certificates is going to follow the host name uh, and then something like underscore uh, key.pam or something along those lines so i'll do www.test.discountjuiceshop.com underscore key.pam And there we have our key. And now we'll generate the CSR or certificate signing request.
I don't have a typo. So open SSL, rec, new, SHA-256, the key, out, and then the file that I want to be the CSR. And just like before, we're gonna fill this out. The common name for web servers needs to match up with whatever you want that domain name to be. So make sure that this, this item in particular is correct. Great, and now finally, we can sign our CSR using our CA. So to sign it, this is gonna be a long command. I'll type it out, then explain what I'm doing. So I type that twice. Intermediate key, ci-key.pem, dash shirt, dash in. Okay, so essentially we are gonna sign this for one year uh, using our intermediate key and the intermediate certificate. And we're gonna take our CSR and generate our web server certificate, this dot pen file. Commit it and ta-da! we have our certificate. Isn't that exciting? So let's take a look at our database file. And there you can see the certificate uh, is in the database, which is pretty awesome. And once again, we're gonna view this in friendly format. So open SSL. And you can see um, the important part, once again, is that common name to make sure that matches up with your domain uh, of your, your website. So pretty awesome. So at this point, you have your uh, certificate and you can install this on a web server of your choosing. I'm not gonna do that in this video. Uh, I know for my Security 2 class for the final project, you're gonna have to do this, but you're gonna essentially do another uh, CSR and then you're gonna get signed by the the goat fatty uh, certificate authority. So I'll explain how to do that in class or in a different video, uh, but hopefully this kind of walks you through setting up your own PKI, generating certificates, all that fun stuff with OpenSSL. That's it for now.